Let's take a look at how to divide two numbers with operands up to 12. Okay, so they ask us to divide 69 divided by 3. Okay, now I always think it makes the division problem a little easier if you write it this way, 69 divided by 3, right? This means the same thing, but now we can go one digit at a time, right? 3 goes into 6 two times, right? 3 times 2 is 6. Okay, so nothing left over from that place, and now I'm going to bring down my 9. And now we think, how many times does 3 go into 9? 3 goes into 9 three times, and 3 times 9 is exactly 9, so I have nothing left over. So 69 divided by 3 is exactly 23. Seventy-two divided by three. Now you have options. If you know off the top of your head what seventy-two divided by three is, well then you can just leave it the way it's written and fill in your answer. If you're not sure off the top of your head, I think writing it out this way as a long division problem makes it a little easier to work with because now we can think one digit at a time. So now instead of thinking how many times does three go into seventy-two, I can say, well, how many times does 3 go into 7? And that makes it a little bit of a simpler problem. 3 goes into 7 2 times, right? 3 times 2 would be 6. So if I subtract that, I have 1 left over, and then I still have to bring down my 2. Okay, so now I think of this as a 12. So what's 12 divided by 3? Or how many times does 3 go into 12? Well, exactly 4 times. Right, 3 times 4 is exactly 12, so I have nothing left over, so this divides evenly. Right, 72 divided by 3 is 24. Thirty-two divided by 2. Now since we're dividing by 2, we're taking half. So you might know half of 32 off the top of your head. If you do, you can just fill it in. Now, if you're not sure, again, this is kind of what we use when we, we're not sure of the mental math, is that we can take 32 divided by 2 and just go one digit at a time. So instead of dividing 32 by 2 all at once, we can say, how many times does 2 go into 3? Well, 2 goes into 3 one time, right? 1 times 2 gives us 2, and then you subtract to see what you have left over. Well, 3 minus 2 is 1. 2 doesn't go into 1, so we have to bring down the next digit of 2. 2 goes into 12 6 times, right? And 2 times 6 gives us exactly 12. So our problem is done. We have nothing left. And you might have known that off the top of your head, right? If you said half of 32, you might have said 16. 45 divided by 3. Okay, so again, you might know this one off the top of your head. You can think what number times 3 would give me 45. If you're not sure, of course, you can always follow our process to write it out as a long division problem, right? This means the same thing, 45 divided by 3, but now you can look at it one digit at a time. So you can say, how many times does 3 go into just the 4? Well, 3 goes into 4 one time, right? 3 times 1 is just 3. And then you have to subtract to see 4 minus 3 has 1 left over. And then we would bring down our next digit of 5. How many times does 3 go into 15? Well, exactly 5 times, right? 3 times 5 is 15. And that gives me nothing left over. So 45 divided by 3 is 15. 84 divided by 3. Okay, well, let's set it up. 84 divided by 3. Well, how many times does 3 go into 8? Only 2 times. 3 times 2 would give us 6. And if I subtract that, well, 8 minus 6 is going to leave me 2 left over. And then we would bring down the 4. 24 divided by 3 is 8, right? 3 times 8 is exactly 24. So I have nothing left over. 
So 84 divided by 3 gives us 28. Now this one you don't need to set up as a long division problem. This one you can probably do with mental math. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 